Soumya. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Wait, it looks like it's nice and bright sunshiny outside your windows. Maybe it's just the light because it's overcast today, right? Yeah, it's my light. Okay. All right. So what's going on? Um, well, what do we got? A few things, actually. Let me just pull it up. It's like... um. Quadratic like factorizations, like quadratic equations, and then like quadratic. Yeah. Equations, yep. That kind of thing. I think I tutored one of your classmates. Yeah, uh, I, I do tutor tutor one of your classmates, and that's what we were doing. So. Okay. Well, that's good then. Okay. So. It's like I'm. I can understand it, but it's like. I don't at the same time. It's like okay. if I have um something like y is equal to like um x minus one in parentheses and x minus three in parentheses, mm -hmm. I can find the x and then I can find the y, but then when I have to find the vertex, I get confused on how to do that. Okay. So you're gonna share share some stuff. Yeah. this kind of thing. Okay. Oops, hold on. All right. Okay, next. Um. It's more of like, um, I just want to like refresh on it, if that makes sense. Okay. Hey. Okay. And then the last one, you just, and then just this. Right, not like, a little. Um, like, I can get whatever you want, whatever. Yeah. Like, the one about like creating a perfect square and then um then the word problem that's down all right okay no 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 go back to the perfect square and then number nine and number ten or just number nine um or both both okay All right, good to go. Okay. 
Okay. And you get to miss school in the morning. That's a bonus. Yeah. But you're having school now, so I don't know. I don't know. You get on math twice today. What's that? You said I'm going to have math twice today. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. That's a day right there. Am I mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Okay, I'm having Bluetooth issues real quick. Come on. Oh, finally. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So are you okay with finding the, um, Wow. Sorry, tablet. No, okay. Are you okay with finding the X intercepts? Yeah. For most of them. Okay. So you want to do all of it. X intercepts, Y intercepts. You want to sketch and find the vertex, the whole deal um, here. I don't I don't need to sketch them because like that I'm fine on. It's just like I just need help finding the vertex. Just so you just want to do the vertex. Yeah. Okay. So I am going to sketch a little bit to help you with the vertex. Like for A, actually, for A, what are the x intercepts? Well, just one and zero and then three and zero. Good. Okay. So the um, a parabola is symmetric, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Meaning. It looks the same on both sides, on either side of the axis of symmetry, correct? Yeah. So you said one and three, right? Yeah. So would you agree that the axis of symmetry splits it right, right down the middle? Yes. It certainly does. And so like okay. this. Right? Yeah. Okay. And the vertex is on the axis of symmetry, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And this is the equation x equals one. Not that you, I mean, you can see, I'm sorry, it's x equals two. And it's halfway between the x intercepts. Oh. If it if it's if it's a, if it's symmetric, it has to be halfway between the x intercepts, right? Because it's halfway between any two points that it, um, let's see, what, here? Any two points that are on the same horizontal line, it's exactly halfway between them. Because oh. it's symmetric. So that means that the vertex of uh, the one in A has an X coordinate of two, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And then the Y coordinate, how could we find the Y coordinate? If I know the x coordinate, plug in the x for x. That's right. So y would equal, which you can probably do in your head, two minus one times two minus three, which is one times negative one, which is negative one. Oh. 
So the vertex is at uh, two, negative one. So right here. Um, but like we learned where it's like negative B over two A in order to find it. So would I just like, would it just be like a negative, like, oh wait. Um, well, in order to do that, you have yeah. to, you would have to expand it. So it's an AX squared plus BX plus C form like this. Okay. Cause I remember doing that. I just, um, yeah. One that can so be. Yeah, well, both we should know both ways. Yeah. Okay, because this is very, very convenient, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like there's just halfway between the um, X and the Y, right? I'm sorry, between the X intercepts. And that if you know that, then you don't have to expand this guy, right? And so yeah. that would be if you did X squared minus 3X minus X plus 3, right? Yeah. Or x squared minus 4x plus 3. So x would equal negative b, so negative negative 4 over 2, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is 4 over 2, which is 2. Oh, okay. Which is yeah, the sense. same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Okay. <clears throat> and then for like the one that you have circled, wouldn't it just be like um, a negative, like, Negative three halves. Yeah, negative three, like x, like over a ten, a negative ten. All right. No, no negative twenty. No, no, no. Two a, not two c. Oh, sorry. It would just be a negative three over two. Yep. <laughs> like, and then okay. you would have to plug that in to get the y coordinate. Okay. Um. But then you plug it back into like the original equation, but mm -hmm. like. Um, like for the ones that have like um, the x squared like in the, the equation like like h like would you plug it back into that equation or would you like I don't know, like plug it any in one of them <laughs> any one of them oh, okay they're yeah. all they're all the same equation just in different forms okay does that make sense yes okay. Do you want to do more of these? Um, can we do like one more of like the x squared plus three x ones? Sure. So maybe um uh, k. Yeah. All right. So for k y equals 2x squared minus 20x plus 50. Mm. So then the axis of symmetry is x equals what? Um, the, is it the negative 2? Right, so it's, it's negative b over 2a, oh, right? Be, Which is? Yeah. It'd be 20 over 4. Which is equal to five. So the vertex is at five in the y coordinate, right? Yeah. So then so y. Have... Go ahead. It'd be two times five, which is ten. Which, like... ah. oh, wait. It's that little oh. thing in there. It'd be two times twenty-five, which is fifty. Minus twenty times five. Good. Plus 50. So that's 50 minus 100 plus 50. Yay! Just, so then it'd just be 5 and 0? Yep, oh. 5, 0. Oh, okay. That's much simpler than the way I've been seeing it. You okay? Any others you want to do um, L um, yeah. for more practice or are you ready to move on? Um, I think I'll just do it just because. Good, good plan. So L is Y equals 
3x squared plus 4x minus 4, right? Yeah. So x equals negative b over 2a, which would be? Negative 4 over 6. Which simplifies to? 0.6. Okay. Yeah, but let's keep it as a fraction. Oh, two thirds, negative two thirds. Yeah, you want you don't want to write it as a decimal unless the decimal is terminating, because then you won't get the y coordinate um, accurately. So would that mean my first term is the negative two thirds, and then you have to plug that negative two thirds into my original equation? Yep. Okay. All good? Yes. Okay. So let's see what's next. Are you okay? Any more for these? Oh, um, no, I don't think so. Okay. All right. So. Okay. So let's see. So you want to do three, four, five, and six? Um, I think just like one from like each, I guess. Just okay. Okay. So, what would you what What do you think you should do? Um. Like, do you split the middle term, or do you do a bit of a guess and check? Right, where you go ahead and put b's here, like 2x, x, and then you look for factors of negative, well, yeah, the only factors of negative 3 are 3 and 1, right? Yeah. So then you have to reason in your head, you know, where, where do the things go? And I'll just, I'll do it right away because... 2 times 3 is 6, right? Yeah. And then minus 1 is 5. And you know that the signs are different because the constant is negative. And so the last two terms have to have different signs. So when they multiply, the result um, is negative. Okay. So it only has to equal that last term then? Like yeah. Because oh. think about it. You're foiling, right? Yeah. You're, you're, if you check it in your head, you have to foil to get back to this if you needed to. Okay. And the last last terms, right? Yes. 
No, I think I remember you and I split the middle term before. Yeah. And um, I thought you liked that, but I'm not sure. So let's just do that real quick, okay? Uh, negative three. <clears throat> so splitting the term, the middle term, is where you take the product of the coefficient of the squared term and the last term. Yeah. And then and then you need factors of negative six that um, uh, that give you um, positive five, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be a negative six times a positive one, wouldn't it? Because, and then negative six plus one equals negative five, right? Um, yeah. But like, if the five is positive, how would that? Sorry, positive six, negative one. Thank you. Uh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So then you rewrite this as 2x squared plus 6x minus x minus 3. Because 6x minus x is 5x. You okay? And then you split it up into the 2. Yep. Factor out a 2x to, and that becomes x plus 3. And you factor out a negative one, and that becomes x plus three. And two. Would it just be two x plus or, or wait, minus one? Because it's minus one. Two. 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 You all right? You want to do another one, or you feel okay? Well, I feel okay. It's just I like when I actually get to like my tests or homework and stuff. I feel like I just like I don't know, not forget it, but it just like slips my mind. Like if I if I'm making a mistake and I'm, I'm scared to that. Well, you know that once you're done, you can foil it and make sure it it becomes the original equation. Yeah, that can be your check. Okay. Okay, and um, the more practice the better, you know, if you're, the more comfortable you'll, you'll be with it. So um, get in as much practice as you can. Okay. okay. Oh, I did that wrong. Okay, so we'll do like number four. Yeah. All right. Don't know, don't know. Same idea. Um, do you want to do you want to split the middle term or do you want to just straight up factor? Split the middle term. So that means you would multiply the two and the five together. You would need negative 10 and negative 1. Excellent. So did you write it as uh, minus 10x first or minus, minus x? I did minus 10x minus x plus 5. Okay. You know, it doesn't matter which order you put these in. Okay. Just so you know. Okay, I got that. Cool.
um, another one or go on to the next one? I think we can go on to the next one. Okay. Okay, so we'll do 5F. We'll do the last one. Did I copy that right? I didn't. Might not be factorable. That's what I've been trying to figure out. But it says fully factorized. So I just I just looked at um, 24 because I know I can put a zero on either one, right? Yeah. So two, three, four. So 46 or 64, 38 or 83. 32 or 122 or 34 and so um it's not working so let me just double check why that's not working okay okay so it's 20x squared you know, there's online factors that you can use just to check, right? Twenty times twelve is two hundred forty, right? Yes. <laughs> two times twelve is twenty-four. Well, I can I can look up the answers in like my book if you wanted to. Oh no, I have the answer. I'm just yeah. wondering how to get to it oh. with splitting the middle term because you should be able to, right? One times twenty-four, two times twelve, three times eight. four times six, it's baffling. So, so here's how we would do it. So um, you can't, if we do it like this, right? It's actually kind of easy because they're both positive, right? So the possible um, first terms are 20 and one, 10 and two and, and five and four. And the most likely would be the five and four for the 20 just because they're smaller, right? Yeah. So then you have to figure out, okay. So um, factors of 12, so that would be three and four because 15 plus 16 is 31. Right, 15x oh. plus 16x is 31x. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure why you can't do it with the middle term. I I don't want to spend time thinking more about it. Okay. Oh, five and oh, there's other factors of 240. Duh, that's why. So um, 240 is also divisible by five, isn't it? 
which is 48. So there's other things that it's divisible by, but 240 is such a big number. Um, you know, when you get a real big number that's going to have lots of factors, then it's it's harder, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like, okay, here are all the factors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, 16, 20, 24, 30, 40. You know, like there's just a whole bunch. Yeah. So it's better to do it this way. Okay. Okay? Okay. And then number six. You pick. Um, I go with A. I'm going to overrule you and do B. Okay. Just because it's the same situation we had before. Mm -hmm. Where I guess it's not too bad. 18 times 6. Well, yeah, we can do 18 times 6. Because you... that's 60. That's 108. Would you be able to take out like a greatest common factor? That would be so much easier if you had a better tutor, Sonia, but you're stuck with me. Okay. So now, now it's much easier, isn't it? Now it's going to, is it going to be 12? And then you add. Yep. And then, and then four then times three. Right? Four times three is 12. And four plus three is seven. Or four is plus six. Yep. Um, like when you're breaking down that 6x, would you do it as just 6x and x? And x? Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. You don't break down the 6x. We, okay. we, we're, we're rewriting the 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 middle term, right? So it's four oh. X and three X. Yeah. And then plus two. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, that's what I got. Wait, um, is that a minus or a plus sign for the two x in the one? It's a it's a plus. Okay, good. I can tell. Yeah. All right. Okay, so to complete a perfect square, you always take one half of the middle term and you square it. 64. Well, how you do half of negative eight first, right? Half of the middle term and then square it. So you would add 16. Oh, oh and that would just be it? That's it. What number must be added, right? Yeah. So what would it be for B? Um, you'd have to take half of 12, mm -hmm. which um, six, sorry. I'm and then you'd have to square it. So yep. 36. There you go. Oh, okay. Um, Let's do C. That would just be half of negative 7, which would be negative 3.5. Let's do negative 7 halves. It's actually easier to square in your head than 3 halves. Okay. Uh, and then you square. Or 3.5, I should say. Yeah, go ahead. Square that, and so you'd get 49 over 4. There you go. Oh, okay. 
Lefty's Easy peasy. And then you should be able to factor it, right? Like the whole reason we do it is so we can factor it into a perfect square. They're not asking you to do that, but I want to make sure that you can. Mm -hmm. So that would factor into X minus four times X minus four. And we want to be able to write it. The reason we do that is we want to be able to write it like that. Yeah. And notice that these guys, or the minus four and the minus four, are always whatever half of the middle term is. Oh. Always. Good. So, X plus, yeah. X plus so this would be x plus six squared, right? Mm -hmm. And this would be x minus seven half squared. Oh, okay. That's so much simpler. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. So great to have two math classes in the same day, isn't it? Ah! Stretching. Okay. You were probably up earlier than me. What time did you wake up? Seven. All right. So we got up at the same time. Well, okay. Did you get out of bed at seven? No. Okay. Me neither. I got out of bed at like 730. <laughs> All right. When the square of a number is increased by 10, the result is seven times the original number. Find the number. All right, well, so any ideas on how to start on this? Well, I think you'd wanna write out like the equation that they're like. Okay, which would be? Squared plus 10 is equal to seven X. Excellent. Okay, so now what? Got to um, solve for x. You wait. You would have to bring over the um, seven x. You'd have to subtract that. But um, it would just. Oh wait, sorry. Um, you know that factors of ten are like the are five and two, and you use negative five, negative two. So x minus five, x minus two, and then wait. I was gonna say you can put that into the null factor log, but I'm not sure if you're supposed to. So you solve for x now, right? x minus 5 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0, right? Well, we have to find the one that works or see if they both work. Or... Yep. So let's do it. The square of a number is increased by 10. So that's uh, 35. The result is 7 times the original number. And that would be 7 times 5 is 35. Booyah. Okay. Square of an original number is increased by 10. So that's 14. It's equal to seven times the original number. Yay, we have two solutions. Oh, okay, that works. That cool. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I'm such a good singer, don't you think? Yeah. Don't lie to me, Sonia. <laughs> the two triangles have equal area. Find the length of BX. Okay, so rule of solving word problems. If you don't know what to do immediately, like like number nine, you could just write out the equation, right? Okay, but here it's like, hmm, hmm. 
So we are asked to add, oh, find the length of BX, right? Yeah. So let your favorite variable represent whatever you're being asked to find. So that would be. Right? Yeah. So that's that we're gonna let that, and then I'm gonna label it since we got a picture, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that would be the base of the triangle, like that. Yeah. But we need to we need to be able to get something to find the formula of the area of the, to use the formula of the area of, of a triangle because the areas have to be equal to another, right? Area of pink equals area of green, correct? Yeah. Correct. You okay with that? Yeah. Are you okay with this part? Okay, so now I need something for XC because um, area of pink, would you agree, is one half the base times the height, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, but we don't know any numbers for the green. So I need something for XC, would you agree? Yeah, you could just, just I don't know, C. Well, then we would have two variables and we can't solve a single equation with two variables. So somehow I have to use X to represent or have X in it to represent XC. So I do know that from B, the entire length from B to C is equal to eight, don't I? From over here. Okay. So then if part of the length is X, doesn't uh, the other part, go ahead. The other part, like they have to both be able to equal up to eight, like, you know, like mm -hmm. the X and the XD line have to equal eight. So good. It, it, I don't know, I don't know if this makes sense, but like, could it be like equals, like, oh wait, no, sorry. You could do X plus, if you wanted to think of it like that, XC has to equal eight, right? Yeah. So then XC, which is what we're looking for, right? Doesn't that equal eight minus X? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now that's always the case. I like the way you did that. Um, but if you know, right, if you know that this part is X, right? This part mm -hmm. has to be eight minus X, doesn't it? The whole thing is a length of eight. Yeah. For example, if I said, all right, from here to here is two, the entire length is eight, you wouldn't even think about it. You go, oh, that's six, right? Are you there? Are you back? Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. But anyway, do you see how um, if this is two and the higher length, entire length is eight, you wouldn't, you, and I said, okay, how long is this? You'd go, oh, it's six, right? Yeah. Now you were probably thinking two plus six is eight. Well, isn't eight minus two equal to six? Yeah. So that's the other way to think about it. So you have one part and you know the entire length. The other part is always the entire length minus the part you know. But like, I, I'm like, like, was the two and the six just an example or like, would those be like- It was just an example. Okay, because now I'm like, where did those numbers come from? No, I, I it was just an example, sorry. No. Example. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, good, good. So, and it has the tick marks, right? So that means this is also eight minus X, mm -hmm. right? So then the area of green, isn't that one half times eight minus X times eight minus X? Yeah, because that's the base and that's the height. Yep. Oh, that makes sense. So now off we go, right? We got to solve this. So let's, um, 
let's get going. Can let, let's try it silently, okay? Um. So we just start working. So this would be nine x equals one half. And let's go ahead and foil this, right? Wait, did the one half, wait, did the nine x come from, like you took one half of 18, one half times 18, and then just yep. times it from the x? Yep. Because okay. in multiplication, the order doesn't matter that you multiply, does it? Okay, I just want to double check. So. Yeah. Okay. And then eight minus squared. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to foil it because we're going to need a quadratic because we have this x over here. So then it'd be 64 uh, minus 8x or minus 16 if you're going to like simplify. Good for it. you. And then plus um, x squared. Okay. Um, so we got it. We have a we have an issue here because if I distribute the one half, I'm going to have a one half x squared and then that makes it difficult to factor, right? Yeah. So the other thing I could do to get rid of the one half is just multiply both sides by one half, couldn't I? Or by two, the reciprocal of one half. <coughs> so then you have 18x equals 64 minus 16x plus x squared. Mm -hmm. You okay? Yeah. And then wouldn't you want to rearrange it or like? Absolutely. I was just making sure that you were okay with this. So wouldn't it be like you want to move over the 18x, but you also want to have an x, the x, squared first so it'd be sure sure um x squared plus 2x ah uh, you subtracted 18x oh sorry minus 18 negative 32 wait i did that wrong no you didn't oh yeah you did 34x yeah um and then plus the x oh wait Oh, wait, sorry, I forgot we were rearranging and I just read the wrong part. Okay. Um, so now you want to have Well, the one I know you're going to use is 2 and 32, but it has to be negative 2 and a negative 32. Right. So that's not going to work, is it? Oh, well, no, the signs are this. Yes, yes. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. It would be x minus 2, x minus 32. Of course. Um, and then it, you just get x is equal to 2. Uh-huh. And then x is equal to 32. And now you're going to plug that back in. So, um, like, wait. you want it to be 2, but then you also want it to be um, 8 minus 2. So that's hey, I was right, wasn't I? Yeah. <laughs> and so that solution works. And then 32, but then 8 minus 32 wouldn't work. Because you, oh, so you can't have so. it. There you go. Yeah. Cool. I mean, yeah. It's just like the like solving the problems. Like, like I, I feel like I know how to do it. It's just like sometimes I get stuck on the way. Yeah. Well, that's normal, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So you okay? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Do you want to do more practice on the other ones? Um. Yeah. Okay, since we have some time. Yeah. Okay, so let's do um, C. Okay. We'll just go backwards and 
like do one until we run out of time, okay? Well, you can factor out two initial initially. Okay. Um, so you would just have four x squared minus eight x plus three. Good. Um, but now you have to like. You have to do the four times the three, which is 12. And then, you know, um, negative 12 plus three. Oh, wait, no, wait, sorry. I said that wrong. Um, two, three, sorry, you need to use six and two. Good. Because you need to have it as negative six and negative two. So it's going to be x, like four x um, squared plus the. Sorry, I'm saying this like one. Yeah. Sorry. What I meant to say. Okay. And then you need to be able to factor out, not factor out. I don't know what I was saying. Like, when you're doing the 4x squared, you need to be able to divide that by the 2. When you, like, so you have 2x, um, 2x, and then minus 3. And then you, would you distribute that negative in? So you get 2x minus 3, and then. Yeah. Well, you factor it, you factor it out, just yeah, using sorry. the right language. That's no, it's all right. Um, right now I'm like, okay. would that um two on the outside just stay there? Because I wasn't sure if I was supposed to like incorporate it in. Nope, okay. just leave it. Okay, because then because like, fully factorizing it is you want all possible factors, right? And there's three factors here. So you don't want to put it back in because then it wouldn't be fully factorized, right? Because if you distribute that two, then you go, oh, I can take a two out of that one, right? So, okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Um, how about D? Well, I think initially you would want to do it like this, the six times the 10, because you can't really do it. Like you can't really have factors of 10 that will equal negative 19. Well, that wouldn't work because of the six that messes everything up. Yeah. So. Oh, wait. Um. Okay, so you would want to have it as like four and 15 so that you're having negative four, negative 15 is going to cancel out. It's going to give you um, the like 60 and then um, a negative 19 and then you want to split it into the two equations so you would have to wait you would have to take out a 2x for the first part so then you'd just be left with 3x minus uh, 2 yeah and then for the next one you could take out a 5 a negative um, and then you'd just be left with 3x minus 2. And then you have 2x minus 5, 3x minus 2. Good. Now, you do realize, like, once you get this one, right, it yeah. has to match this one. So that's a clue. Like, if you're like, oh, what do I take out? Well, I mean, you can go ahead and write whatever this is and just make sure that whatever you factor out if this is if you get stuck now mm. think okay what times this is going to give me the original right yeah that's one way if you if you get stuck it's another way to go okay all right why don't we try um b what the heck
Well, I already know I'm going to be using 8 and 3 as my factors. Or Good for you. Three. So that'd be 2x squared minus 8x minus 3x plus 12. What's out there? Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, Luna's not. There's a squirrel hanging on our screen, and our cat is very interested. It'd be 2x minus 3x minus 4. Mm. Excellent. Uh, let's do F. It's just going to be 2x minus 3, 3x minus 1. Oh, wait, I messed up my factors. Never mind. How come for um what did I write that wrong? Like I did I got like two x minus three, but I put it first, but then the three x minus one second. Okay, so it's not minus, it's not two x minus three, it's two x plus three. Oh yeah, sorry, that's what I have written down. It's just not yeah, the order doesn't matter. Okay. Like five times four equals four times five, right? Yeah. Multiplication doesn't matter. All right. Is that all good? Yep. All right. I will email you the notes and I'll upload the video later, okay, to your folder. All right. Anything else before we go? I don't think so. Don't think okay. So. Feel better about it? Much, much better. Okay, cool. All right. Have a have fun at uh, the doctor. You have a doctor appointment? Dentist. Dentist. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> Bye. And I'm not seeing you Sunday, right? No, because I have to go to Georgia for a race. Okay. All right. Well, then I guess maybe we'll try and find some other time. So have a great week. You too. Thank you. Bye.